and welcome to another video. This video is actually part two of the series in which I am pouring a Sennelier palette from tube paint that I purchased. Part one um, premiered last week and I will link it up above so you can go check that one out if you really want to watch it all from the beginning. Today, in part two, I will be trying to sort out these paints, as you can see on screen, to put them in an order which I think would be lovely to have in my palette, because I do like to do that beforehand, uh, before I start actually pouring these paints. And after the sorting is done, I will start out with pouring the upper row of my palette so that will be the yellows and oranges and a little bit of the reds for you guys now after i posted the video last week i asked you all if you had experience with sennelier paints yourselves and how you found them to be i got a lovely response um from allison who is actually very knowledgeable <laughs> by the sound of the comments she made um, she really enjoys these paints and she also gave me a heads up about what I need to think about when pouring out paints like this into the half pans that I have for them. Sadly for me though, I already pre-recorded this bit uh, because this was just one afternoon for me and I chose to have it in smaller parts and sections for the videos because it would just be a very long video otherwise. Um, and she mentioned that you should fill a half pan up about a third of the way the first time, let it dry, and then re-pour it another third and so on until you have a full pan of paint. Well, I wish I knew that beforehand or did a little bit more research because that is not the route that I chose to take in this case. Uh, as you will see, I will be pouring the half pans out in totality, and I did account for some, um, well, shrinkage, um, I think would be the best term that I can think of, because the water will obviously evaporate out of these paints as soon as they are in the pans. So I did fill them up quite a bit in most cases so that you would actually be left with a full half pan afterwards and not have it shrunken down to half a half pan so a quarter pan is that a thing um i don't know but know that i have been uh warned and i have no idea how it is gonna end up looking uh like because i did pour these paints in the palette and i have been checking but they still seem pretty sticky and not dry to me so I'm hoping they will dry someday and I will definitely let you guys know, but I will film that video after um, I actually pour out all these paints and you've seen all those videos so that it has plenty of time to dry. Now as for the sorting of the color part, uh, there are numbers on these tubes and I first started off with having them uh, go from lowest number to highest number, but that doesn't really work out well. So I ended up uh, looking up the color chart that Sennelier provides for their paints and actually kind of going off of that and arranging them, uh, arranging them in that type of way, which you can see on the screen, I finally managed to do. <laughs> now, I do wanna mention that when I purchased this set of Sennelier tubes, that it actually came with an extra ultramarine. So I have a double for the ultramarine. I won't be pouring out two half pans for my palette because that just seems like overkill. So I just put it to the side and then we are left with this selection. Starting off, we will be pouring the Lemon Yellow 501 paint in its half pan. This paint is made up of the PY3 pigment and is totally transparent. It has a light fastness rating of two. So let's see how our first paint pours out. There's not uh, a lot of binder separation with this color, so that's quite nice. 
did feel very liquidy and it really just came spilling out which is very nice because it actually doesn't leave a weird shape in the paint and it kind of levels out and I really like that look for uh, a half pan to have on my palette. Moving on uh, to the Oreoline color. This is made up of pigment PY40, so it's a singular pigment. It is a series four, so it's a little bit more expensive than the one we saw before this. Now, I didn't actually film pouring this out, unfortunately. I forgot to turn on my camera, but you can see some binder separation be very prominent. Didn't really know how to handle that at first, um, but I wound up uh, getting a little needle and mixing it in. You will see that later in uh, the video. Then another yellow color, Sennelier Yellow Light. And it is PY153. Also a transparent color, and uh, people told me they are well known for their uh, transparent nature, and um, they really are made for artists who layer watercolors on top of each other in multiple layers, because um, it doesn't have that mega pigmented punch that some other uh, watercolors have, but it does stack up nicely so you don't oversaturate too quickly. Now this yellow didn't really level out as well as we saw that first lemon yellow do. So you are left with this little weird looking blob, um, which looks kind of cute, I think. But I did go in and uh, straighten that out afterwards to make it more even. You can see me trying here to shake the blob, but eh, I wasn't budging. It really liked looking like, I don't know, what do you think? A toad with some sort of horn on its head? Pretty cute, but not great for my palette. So moving on with the Indian yellow. That is a PY154 and a PY153. So a little bit of that pigment we saw before mixed in there. Now let's find out if this also ends up being a blob or will actually even out more. Nope, that looks like a perfectly pourable paint. It's not as smooth as the first one, but it's not as blobby as the last one. So a uh, good in between. Now up next, our final yellow of the set. This is the yellow Sophie. is semi-transparent and it is made up of one pigment, the yellow pigment 93. So as you can see there was a little binder coming out at the very beginning but the rest of this paint seems well mixed. And it also kind of looks like a muck character if you are familiar with the Pokemon series from way back in the day. Now up next, a different color and I'm quite happy because that's a lot of yellows. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to need that many yellows, but we'll see. It is the Chinese orange. Now on um, the back, it says it's actually three pigments, a yellow pigment, 150, red pigment, 209, and a brown pigment, 23. It's supposed to be transparent, and I'm really curious to see what this orange will look like, because it does seem a little bit more on the red side, just looking at the color on the tube. This was a little bit harder uh, of a push to get the paint out, but when it was out it was pretty good and not too tacky
Now this is the only orange that I have in this set, so we're moving right along to Alizarin Crimson Lake. It's a nice red color and it is made up of one pigment, a red pigment 83. It is totally transparent as a lot of people have known Sennelier um, for their most transparent colors. And I do understand that I think mostly floral painters like working with this, but I don't know if that's a myth, but it's something that you hear uh, quite a lot around the internet. So this paint was actually um, really, really liquidy and it went down very well and there was no binder separation. Of course, I don't know how long all of these tubes have been in somebody else's cupboard until they decided to sell them, but it's pretty good seeing as I've had them for like over two months and there's no binder pigment separation. Now the True Red Carmine, it is made up of PV19, which is actually, the V stands for violet, so it's quite impressive to see how much uh, redness they actually gave to this paint. As I pour it in the pan, there was actually some binder coming out first, and this was so liquidy. I mean, look at that. That's way more liquidy than anything we've seen until now. So uh, it makes for a nice flat top on the pan, but it was kind of a surprise having to work with the paint this liquid. Now the last of the Sennelier paints that I will be pouring out for my top row is this Cobalt Violet Deep. And it is actually a hue. So for all you purists out there, <laughs> this is you instead of just the straight up pigment. It is PR122 and the PV16 pigment. And it is semi-transparent. It's really hard to capture this color on camera because it was such a nice violet color, but um, you know, my color correction just really wasn't picking up on it all too well with that kind of wood grain background. And with that pan, we have reached the end of filling the half pans for the top row. And I will show you guys how I put them in here. Now, it's kind of hard doing a close-up of this while trying to put those little pans into these tiny slots. But at least you can kind of see how it's done if you want to start doing your own palette pours. So don't forget to join me next week for filling the second row of this palette and looking at more lovely Sennelier paints being poured into half pans. I do have a warning for you. I do mess up somewhere along the line, so that might be fun for you to watch. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and or a comment. I really love hearing from you guys and reading all of your own experiences with this medium and even this brand if you have some. And if you like watching relaxing art content on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel because it motivates me so much and it really helps me out. 
thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.